driving along and I saw a snowshoe hare right out in the open feeding on some shrubs. And uh, I turned around, went back, and then turned around again so I could get on the right side of the sun. And I saw three snowshoe hares. <laughs> so, right over there, right over there. Only got video of one, but hey, they rarely come out in the open, so that's a good way to start the morning. Ah, uh, welcome to Virtually Live 35. Yeah, and we're closing in on the end of season three here. But today is March 5th, and it is beautiful. It is only about eight degrees, but it's supposed to get up above freezing today. Dead calm. I just had to stop and check out this beautiful winter scene. We got crows, ravens, blue jay. One of the goals today is gonna be looking for Canada jay nests. I've only been looking for them for about 20, 30 years. <laughs> Never found one yet, but that is one of my goals today. We're gonna do a little snowshoeing. See if we can find any Canada jays doing any uh, suspicious behavior that might mean they have a nest nearby because they're they're building nests right now all right let's get to it we are going to start off with some very exciting news our science and research fund has helped in a small way support hannah and her research on northern hawk owls she's a master's degree student university of minnesota duluth and what can i say about this hawk owl it's the only one that's been in the bog the last two years we think and hannah tried really really hard multiple times to catch this guy and finally did at kind of the 11th hour and yeah well she's going to tell you a little bit about what her project is all right, so here we have a northern hawk owl that was just caught in Zaxxon Bog. Um, we gave it a little backpack transmitter um, and it will be able to track its locations remotely. So we'll be able to see where it's going, um, you know, what its home range looks like. We're super excited that we have this bird. It's the most southern uh, bird that we've caught for the project. So we have other birds that have transmitters up in Manitoba, northern Minnesota, and now we have one in Zaxxon Bog. So super exciting and um, yeah. We'll see where this bird goes. If you want to learn more about Hannah's hawk owl research project, go to our website. We have her webinar archived under the field trips tab. We will certainly update you when Hannah finds out where this guy is breeding. We don't know. Are our hawk owls that are with us in the winter, are they coming from Manitoba or Ontario or just far northern Minnesota? Or are they nesting in the bog way back deep in the black spruce we'd like to build up this fund to about thirty thousand dollars yeah thirty thousand rich hogue has uh generously donated a thousand dollars to kind of jumpstart this fundraiser we've got other exciting projects coming up in conjunction with the u.s forest service putting out aru's i think it's automated recording units and trying to record owl vocalizations great gray owl mainly on our owl survey routes, places where we've heard them in the past. And to get a better handle on the timing of owl courtship and behavior up here in the North Woods. We're also gonna use ARUs with the Finch Research Network to record crossbills. And the goal there is once again, to see what types, there's 10 or 11 types, and what their phonology is for their calling and singing here in the Sac Zimba. He's talking to me. Got uh, a pair of Canada Jays up here. Got a little video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they are squeaking here. But uh, yeah, so that was one of my goals today is try and find a nest. So this pair is probably nesting somewhere within a half mile of here. But where? The researchers uh, out at Algonquin Park in Canada 
would take cotton balls, all natural cotton balls, shred them and present them, put them in the tree branches to the Canada Jays because they would pluck them off the tree branches, use them to construct their nest. And so then they'd have people kind of stationed out in the woods so they could get a, a compass bearing on which way to go because the Canada Jays would fly directly to the nest. I didn't bring any cotton balls. Well, this might be the year. I know I just said that I was, I've been looking for a Canada Jay nest for about 30 years. <laughs> okay, maybe 20 years. And looking, by looking, I mean, not that hard, but Chad Hines came through. Got a note from Clinton that Chad and his buddy found what appears to be an active Canada Jay nest right back here. So I'm putting on the snowshoes. It is now March 14th, about nine below zero. And we just got a foot of snow. Go in uh, to his lat long coordinates and see what I find. As you know, they nest in here in late winter, early spring. And they're built this big bulky nest, uh, really thick, well insulated. They'll put deer hair and moose hair and maybe rabbit hair, snowshoe hair, hair <laughs> to line it. And they're on eggs through snowstorms and below zero temps. And the young are out in April. Yeah, amazing. Well, I'm at the spot and it is very quiet. But I guess as you'd expect, they don't want to give away the location of their nest. In fact, Chad and his buddy found it because a red squirrel had stumbled upon <laughs> the tree. Yeah, not good for the red squirrel because the Canada Jays just uh, mercilessly chased him away. Just heard some crossbills. There was a flock of pine grosbeaks, which might be some of the last heading back north to Canada. Well, I'll give it another half hour or so. I'm just laying here in the snow, watching the male Canada Jay high up in the tamarack. I think he's waiting to maybe take his shift on the eggs. I've been laying here for like 20 minutes and he's been in the exact same spot. I don't wanna move too much because I think he will go over and relieve the female or maybe feed her, I'm not sure. He doesn't care about me, but I'm sure if a squirrel or something showed up, he'd freak out. This is great on the neck, and my booty is cold. I'm just walking a stretch of Saks Road, where there's been a sighting multiple sightings of a spruce grouse. And there's been about five or six now confirmed sightings with photos of spruce grouse in Sac Zim. And this is amazing since they really hadn't been recorded since the 1960s here. Why are they moving back in? I don't know. Well, here's the jack pine. They love jack pine needles, but they also love spruce and tamarack needles. And we have lots and lots and billions and billions of those. But it's very exciting, very exciting especially for the guides <laughs> who don't, you know, if they get them here, they wouldn't have to make that long trek at dawn to the Superior National Forest. All the sightings have been males so far, and you kind of need females to establish a population. But I am having no luck today. common red poles and pine grosbeaks and a hairy woodpecker.
I'm on the trails at Augie's Bog Walk, beyond where the boardwalk ends. Really nice little trail to walk, laid out by naturalist Clinton and board member Reuben. But yeah, somebody had a blackback woodpecker in here a few weeks ago. I'm just listening for flaking of bark. They don't uh, peck and hammer like Harry's and Downey's. They're just flaking bark to get at uh, the grubs underneath the bark. Perfect habitat, right? Nice spruce and some tamaracks. It's really quiet today, but a uh, few Harry's. Really nice. And you don't need snowshoes for a lot of our trails. They just get packed down by people walking. I guess I can announce it now. We are gonna extend the Taiga Boardwalk, the John C. Gale Boardwalk, next summer. And it'll join up with Gray J Way. Yeah, so today I just need to kind of start plotting the route. Tamarack shortage prevented us from finishing it last year, but we'll finish it this spring. Little ermine tracks, paired, offset, very narrow, very short, loping gait. That's an ermine. We close for the season on Sunday, March 12th. We'll be back June 1st through August 31st. We'll be open at least from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day. The outhouses and the boardwalks are open year round, of course. Those never close. You can hear the evening growth peaks. It's been a phenomenal winter for evening growth peaks here at the Welcome Center. The snow that has slid off the roof. What do you see out there? I saw. What do you see? Evening growth peaks. What have you seen today? Well, I, um, an owl. My mom showed me a picture. An owl? And some roast beaks and chickadees. Oh, awesome. Do you know what a chickadee says? Yeah. <laughs> you are right. Oh, and he found an owl. Yeah. Did you tell him it's not real? <laughs> That's not real, buddy. <laughs> what do you see? Last question I'm gonna to answer today is, what are you guys doing with your science and research fund? Well, I ran it down to zero, but we have been supporting several research projects. Evening Grosbeak researchers were here in February. David Yeeney from the Pennsylvania Natural Heritage Program was here, along with uh, Matt Young from the Finch Research Network. Matt presented a fascinating program to a packed house about the natural history of winter finches, and also a little background on the Road to Recovery Evening Grosbeak project. David and his crew were putting satellite trackers on evening grosbeaks. The population has kind of dipped quite a bit in the last 40 years. Is it a natural cycle and they're gonna come back up like they're coming up in numbers right now? Or is this more of a long-term uh, serious decline. So they're putting satellite trackers on these evening gross peaks in Sac Zim to see where they go. Headquarters, little, Command Central. Set. Yeah, Hunting. yeah. Hey. Pretty good, huh? I call it Ice Station Gross Beak. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's a debatable. Yep. So. <laughs> Today we're doing some work for our Road to Recovery project on evening gross beak. Uh, even gross speak has declined by 90% over the last 50 years. And so part of this project is putting out transmitters to track birds from wintering to um, breeding areas and learn more about their migratory connectivity. But also we're color banding every single gross speak that we capture um, with these unique color combinations. 
And what we can really use is your help as a birder or a photographer. Um, anytime you're out seeing evening grow speaks around Saxon bog um, or at your own feeders to report these color combinations. What you want to do is report these um, according to the leg that belongs to the bird. So the bird's right leg, the bird's left leg. Okay. And you report what's up, upper and what's lower. So this bird would be right upper and right lower black. left upper metal and left lower red and that's the combination you'd report also don't worry if you get a photo of a bird and you only see one leg we still want to know there's a chance that we could still be able to identify this bird as one of the ones we caught here at saxon bog or at one of our other sites across the country And David sent me some maps already and, uh, you know, kind of interesting to see where they're wandering around in the winter. And here's the initial wanderings of eight evening grosbeaks as they scattered about the Saxon bog. And for a little scale, this map is about 25 miles wide. You can see they are not staying in one place. In fact, if they're at the Zabin feeders one day, they might be a day later at the Welcome Center feeders or up at Mary Lou's or out in the middle of the woods. So really fascinating. But the real goal is to find out where they're breeding, where the evening grosbeaks are coming from, uh, the ones that winter here in Sag Zim. And here's where two of the evening grosbeaks David tracked last winter ended up breeding in 2022. The pink one ended up by Red Lake, Ontario, quite a ways north. And the green you see there, he milled around in the Saxon bog and ended up going almost to Saskatchewan and ended up by Dauphin, Manitoba. Now here's the animated map for both those birds and they both headed north of the border in early May, settling in their breeding territories by late May, early June. Now come along with Warren Wussner and Iris Freeman and Mike and Linda we went on a little half day excursion in the bog and had a blast. And we found some pretty cool stuff. Right when we thought the sharp tail grouse were disappearing from Sag Zim, <laughs> this lek off of Connie Road 7 south of Saks Road has been very active, far off the road. Oh, yeah, they are dancing a little bit. You gotta see this, Mike. But, yeah, they were out there on top of the couple feet of snow, just dancing away. Even though the peak is in April, they were primed and, and even doing a little fighting. Here they come. We got a nice flock of common red poles. They've been really scarce this year. There's plenty of birch seeds and alder seeds up north, so no reason for them to come down here to the Arctic Riviera and northern Minnesota. They're fat and happy up north, but yeah, fun to see these. We're trying to pick out a hoary. Wouldn't that be nice? Kim Eckert used to say about one in every hundred could be a hoary, um, so that's what we're trying to pick one out now. We got a nice female hoary red pole with a flock of commons working on a little salt block, a little chunk of snurt, snow dirt that fell off a car, probably laced with road salt. And uh, yeah, much paler, uh, very little streaking on the sides. Um, not a classic male, super frosty hoary, but uh, yeah, countable.
Thanks to Ron Dominiak who keyed us in on this barred owl just snoozing and hunting along Arcola. And yeah, this time of year, sometimes the barred owls come out, they get hungry and they have to hunt in the daytime as well as nighttime. So it is, you know, this kind of a tough time of year. And then they'll start nesting here in April. <laughs> Brain filling out. Dammit Road, looking for blackback woodpeckers. <laughs> any luck? Anything? <laughs> any luck? I can't find any. It's uh, question and answer time here on Virtually Live. Uh, one of them this week is how do I get my photos in the calendar? We don't have enough people to just open it up for submissions. You know, only three of us are year round full time. So we don't have time for that. So I do pick a lot of them off of our Facebook group and page, Friends of Sac Zimbog Facebook group. And then I find out who the photographer is and contact them directly. Photos that we always need would be images from April through October. I see a ton of winter photos and a ton of great gray owl photos, but we need uh, other things, you know, even uh, spiders and dragonflies and orchids and flowers and things like that. I put it together in August, uh, so I'll be working on the 2024 calendar this summer. Post your best stuff on our, our Facebook group and you might have a shot. I think we'll wrap it up here. Superstar Mammal, no doubt about it, that uh, snowshoe hair group, three of them. Uh, this morning, first thing, superstar bird of the day. Well, superstar bird of the episode is definitely the barred owl along Arcola. Pretty cool to see him sleeping, then hunting. Yeah, <laughs> winter is definitely loosening its grip a little bit, although I know we're supposed to get more snow tonight. Join me for season four, which begins April 1st. And yeah, we'll do some spring birding. All right, until then, keep your feet in the remaining snow. Yeah, do a little bushwhacking. Get get up, get some snowshoes. Get out, enjoy the boreal forest. Keep your head up, saying goodbye to those pine grosbeaks which are on their way back to northern Canada. Take care. <laughs>